Hello. In this video, we will access the current weather conditions for any city using JavaScript. The task before us is to use AJAX to access JSON data from the Weather Underground website using their API. Now, don't worry, this will not be near as difficult as it may sound. Before we begin, you need to have two things already completed. First, you need to create your own account on the Weather Underground website. You can see here that I'm already logged in. Second, you need your own API key. You can see mine here in the Key Settings tab. Okay, now that you have your API key handy, we can get started. If you're not already there, select the Weather API for Developers from the front page drop-down menu. Select the Documentation tab at the top, and then Conditions on the left side. Scroll to the bottom of this page where you see Examples. Click Show Response. Now you can see all the current weather conditions for San Francisco. If you scroll through this JSON weather data, you can see things like Display location with the city and state, the temperature, humidity, and wind direction. Down near the bottom, they even have a URL to a graphic representing the current weather conditions. We'll come back to this data in a minute. For now, let's look at the yellow bar under Example. This is the path we will use with our AJAX request to access JSON weather data. If you are logged in to the Weather Underground using your account, this will be your personal API key. If not, you must replace this with your own API key. With that information, I think we're ready to start coding. You should have on the desktop a start.zip file. Let's open that up and drag it into our brackets text editor to the left hand pane. That opens it up and we can see that there's an index.html file and a main JavaScript file. There's also a CSS, but we don't really care about that for now. Inside our JavaScript document, we're going to create a new variable. And I'm going to use the word weather object. And it's going to be a new XML HTTP request. So now I've created my own weather object. Now that I have a weather object, there's lots of things I can do with it. I can do open, send, on loads, check the status of it, do lots of things. So let's start by setting the weather object dot open. Now there are three pieces of information that we need for the open. Each is separated by a comma. The first one is the method we're going to use to grab the data from the Weather Underground site, then we will just use the method get. The second piece of information comes from the Weather Underground's documentation. So I'm going to go to the Weather API for Developers, pull up the documentation, click on the current conditions, scroll to the bottom, and copy this URL that's provided for me. Now because I'm logged in, this API key is mine, and I'll paste it right there. After the second comma, we just put the word true. That means access the data asynchronously. Even though this is called open, it doesn't actually open anything. It just sort of initializes it or sets it up. So to actually get the data, we're going to use the dot send. So that will go out and get it. Nothing's going to appear yet, though. Now what we're going to do is wait around for the data to load. So we'll use the onLoad method, and we'll set it equal to a function. And I like to comment and of onLoad. Once the data loads successfully, we will convert it to a JSON object. So I'm going to make up a new variable called weather info or information and we'll set it equal to json.parse and what we're going to do is parse the response text 
for the weather object. Now that we have the object, we can actually console.log the weather information. Now remember, we're getting the weather information for San Francisco, California. So let's open that up in a browser. I'll grab my index page. I can do this locally as long as I have an internet connection. I'll inspect the page. I'll switch to my console and I can see that there's an object. If I open the current observation, I can see that the display location is San Francisco, US. At this point, pat yourself on the back, go get a cookie. You've done well. Let's try another city. Well, I grew up in Wyoming. Very different weather information from San Francisco at this point. So let's refresh the page. It loaded correctly. And I can see in display location that I've got Thane, Wyoming up. Now that our data is correctly displayed to the console, let's take that information out here and display it on the web page for our end user. Let's switch back to our index.html. We'll delete learning JavaScript and instead we'll put weather conditions for and then we'll put a span tag in here. And we could put a placeholder if we wanted, city comma state. In order for JavaScript to access this span tag, we must give it an ID equals and we'll just call it place. Hit refresh. And there we've got city and state. Now let's go into JavaScript and replace that. Document dot get element by ID. And the element is place. And we'll set the dot inner HTML equal to the variable weather information. And remember, it's a JSON object, so we're going to get some values separated by dots. Luckily, Chrome tells us exactly what to put here. So if we open up this object, go to Current Observation, open up Display Location, notice that I've got the city, the country, the elevation. What I want is the full name, so it's Thane, comma, Wyoming. And you can see that it's dot Current Observation, dot display underscore location dot full. In my JavaScript, I will type that information followed by a semicolon, save it, refresh the page, and I now have Thane Wyoming displayed from my JSON data file that was loaded using Ajax from the Weather Underground's API. That should make you feel pretty awesome at this point. Now let's get the current temperature. We'll put that inside of a paragraph tag. Current temperature is, say, 90, and then we want to have a degree mark. So let's refresh. There it is. It looks nice. Now let's replace the 90 with the real temperature. So 90 goes away, replaced by a span tag. We can put 90 in there if we want. ID equals current temperature. Save it. It's going to be very similar to this one. So we'll copy, paste. What is the ID? The ID we're looking for is current temperature. So I copy that. What am I after? Well, it's not this. Let's go back and ask our JSON data inside of our browser what the current temperature is. So under current observation, here's temp underscore Fahrenheit. That's the one I want. Notice it is a chilly 40 degrees. And if I type dot current underscore observation dot temp underscore F, that should give me what I need. There it is. Save it. Hit refresh. 
And now I have the true chili 40 degrees for Thane, Wyoming. Now you can go through any of these that you see. And if it's important to your website, you know how to drop it in simply by creating a new element in your index page and giving it an ID and then tapping the inner HTML of that ID. Now let's do one more thing. Let's drop in an image tag which has a source equals and an alt equals. The alt is going to say current weather. The source we're going to leave empty for now. We are going to give this an ID equals weather underscore icon so that we can access it with JavaScript. Save that. This one is very similar again to what we've already done. But instead of current temp, it's weather underscore icon. Instead of enter HTML, it's SRC. Why SRC? Because this is SRC. Now let's go find out where that icon lives. Here we can see the icon underscore URL, which is a full path to a rain.gif. So if we type dot current observation dot icon underscore URL inside of our JavaScript, save it, hit refresh, we now have that pretty little rain icon. Let's try another one. Instead of Thane, Wyoming, let's try Rexburg, Idaho. Hit refresh. Rexburg's a little warmer. It's a sunny day, 56.7 degrees right now. Let me show you what can be done if we take what you've learned and add a little bit of HTML and CSS to it. Here's an example of a website that is accessing weather from the Weather Underground using JSON data and Ajax. On a phone, it looks like this. When we rotate our phone, it changes the presentation of the data to two columns. And if we look at it on a larger, say an iPad, it's also two columns. And if we look at it on a desktop, then you've got this.